Chapter 3 British Invasions The Great Game Just three years after the Second Opium War ended, another king in another country managed to drive the British and all other foreign invaders out of his homeland. The king's name was Dost Muhammad Khan, and he ruled in Afghanistan, a rocky, parched country that lay sandwiched between Russia to the north and India to the south. By the time that Dost Muhammad became its leader, Afghanistan had already been invaded over and over again. First, the Mongols had taken the country over. Then a prince of India named Babur had added part of Afghanistan to his Indian empire. Persia, which lay along Afghanistan's western border, moved in to take over the rest of Afghanistan. Two hundred years later, a heroic Afghan chief named Mirwais Hotoki Khan drove the Persians out. At first, Mirwais Khan had worked for the Persians. He even lived at the Persian royal court. But then the Persian Shah, the king, assigned a cruel, ruthless Persian governor to run Mirwais Khan's home, the eastern city of Kandahar. Mirwais Khan saw his people suffering, arrested and killed for no reason. So he invited the governor and his bodyguard to a country picnic, and had them both killed. Then Mirwais Khan led an army into Kandahar and drove the Persians out of his country. But when Mirwais Khan died after six years of rule, the Persians invaded Afghanistan once again. Another hero arose to push back the foreign invaders. He was a native Afghan who had served in the bodyguard of the Persian Shah. He fought against the Persians, pushed them back out of his country, and ruled for twenty-six years over all the different tribes who lived in Afghanistan. He became known as Durrani, which means pearl, because his rule was as valuable as a jewel to the people of Afghanistan. But then Durrani died, and the tribes began to quarrel about who should be king next. Finally, one soldier managed to take control of Kabul, the largest, most important city in Afghanistan. His name was Dost Muhammad Khan. At first, Dost Muhammad Khan was Khan, or chief, only in the city of Kabul. But he spent the next ten years fighting to spread his power around the surrounding countryside. Finally, the other leaders of Afghanistan agreed to recognize him as their leader. They gave him the title of Amir, or commander, because it would be his job to lead the Afghan people in war against their enemies. Dost Muhammad was a skilled warrior and general, a tall, keen-eyed, energetic man who preferred plain soldiers' clothes to fancy court costumes. But he soon learned that fighting alone would not protect Afghanistan from invasion. To keep his country independent, Dost Muhammad would have to scheme and plot. You see, Afghanistan lay right between Russia and British-run India. Russia and Britain were enemies. Neither country wanted the other to control the country between their two borders. So Russia and Britain each tried to convince Dost Muhammad to sign an alliance. The Russian and British strategies to get control of Afghanistan became known as the Great Game. The first move in the Great Game came from Russia. The Russian government convinced Persia to join Russia in an invasion of western Afghanistan. The combined Persian-Russian army could easily overcome the west of the country and then march on towards Kabul, where Dost Muhammad ruled. But when the British saw this army on the move, they sent a message to the Shah of Persia. The message warned the Persians that if the invasion continued, Persia would be considered an enemy of Britain and would suffer the consequences. The Shah of Persia wasn't particularly afraid of Dost Muhammad, but he didn't want to make enemies of the entire British Empire, so the Persian soldiers all withdrew from Afghanistan. Britain had won the first match in the great game. Now the British tried a move of their own. They planned to lend a lot of money to Dost Muhammad so that he could use it to hire soldiers to fight against the Persians and the Russians. This would keep the Russians out of Afghanistan. It would also put Dost Muhammad in debt. A loan of money, one British diplomat wrote, would give us a great hold upon him. Instead of taking the money, Dost Muhammad decided that he too would join in the great game. He told the British government that 
Afghanistan would be a friend and ally to Great Britain, as long as British soldiers would help him drive out the Indians who still lived in the southern parts of Afghanistan. When the British government refused, Dost Mohammed asked the Russians for help instead. At this, the British grew angry. It is time, one British official announced, to interfere decidedly in the affairs of Afghanistan. Instead of helping Dost Mohammed drive the Indians out of Afghanistan, the British sent sepoys, Indian soldiers under British command, and English soldiers from India northward into Afghanistan. This Indian-British army marched through the wilds of Afghanistan until they reached the fortress city that protected Dost Muhammad's kingdom. Dost Muhammad had put his son in control of this fortress, but his son had neglected to wall up all of the fortress's gates. When the Indian-British army discovered that one of the gates was not bricked up, they blew it up, captured the fortress, and then stormed on towards the center of Dost Muhammad's kingdom, the city of Kabul. Dost Muhammad wanted to stand and fight, but his soldiers, seeing the overwhelming British force, had begun to desert him. He had to flee into India. Meanwhile, the Indian British army occupied the city of Kabul and grew more and more unpopular. They ate food that belonged to Afghans, took whatever they wanted from the markets, and treated the people of Kabul with contempt. Finally, the Afghans had had enough. In Kabul, Angry Afghans killed a British official before soldiers could arrive to protect him. Then they besieged the army's headquarters. When another British official arrived to settle things down, the rebels killed him as well. The British Indian Army decided that it was time to leave Kabul. But now winter had come. The soldiers marched south towards India in freezing cold, with Afghan fighters following them and attacking from behind. Four days into the journey, over 4,000 British soldiers had died. Only 120 were left. As this tiny remainder approached the border, the rebels made a final attack against them. Only one wounded man escaped. The army that had invaded Afghanistan had been completely destroyed. The British gave up the idea of conquering Afghanistan, but they were angry over the massacre of their army. Troops of British soldiers marched into Afghanistan, burning, killing, and looting. When they had destroyed dozens of villages and killed hundreds of Afghans, they withdrew. Their revenge was over. Now Dost Muhammad returned from India. His kingdom had shrunk. The Persians had taken advantage of the chaos to invade the West. Other warlords had seized bits of the country for themselves. All Dost Muhammad had left was the city of Kabul. But Dost Muhammad was a patient man. He spent over 15 years slowly rebuilding his kingdom. And because he knew that another war with Britain would only weaken Afghanistan more, he decided to make peace with his enemy. In 1855, Twelve years after the disastrous British invasion of Afghanistan, Dost Muhammad signed a treaty with Britain. This treaty promised that he would not attack the British and that the British would stay out of Afghanistan. When the Sepoy Mutiny broke out in India, two years after the treaty was signed, Dost Muhammad kept to his part of the treaty. He did not go down into India and join the Sepoys against the British. Had Dost Muhammad turned against the British, one British general said later, I do not see how any part of the country north of Bengal could be saved. Meanwhile, Dost Muhammad kept on expanding his territory. He added Kandahar to his kingdom and gave it to one of his sons to rule. Then, in 1863, he drove the remaining Persians out of the west. Finally, Afghanistan was free of invaders. Two weeks later, Dost Muhammad died late one night in his own bed. He had ruled over an independent Afghanistan for 14 days.